songwriter. He's just overall amazing. He goes by the name of 4AM Chef Jimmy, a uh, government name, James Weaver. But uh, yeah, he goes by 4AM Chef Jimmy. I've been knowing him for like, how many years was that? Almost six, I want to say. We met in like 2015 at Hampton. So yeah, that's my little bro. And I'm so excited and super proud of him to have him on. So please join me in welcoming 4 a.m. Chef Jimmy. Clap it up. Clap it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Appreciate man. you, boss, man. Thank you for coming on the show with us. For sure. Yes, cool, thank man. you. So just tell our listeners and our viewers just a little bit about yourself and what you do now. Okay, well, um, Jazz already touched on it a little bit, but I'm a spoken word artist, rapper, um, entrepreneur. I'm also a music teacher. Um, so you know, I just got my hands in, in a lot of different pots right now, and ultimately, you know, I'm just focused on the music. Um, I just recently moved to Atlanta uh, from Chicago, originally, and, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what's going on over here. Cool, man. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. If I haven't said that already, which I know I did, but anyway. <laughs> uh, Thank you. So uh, tell us a little bit about your most memorable experience as an artist so far. My most memorable experience, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm, I've been blessed to have a couple experiences that really stuck out. Um, going to Hampton University, I had an opportunity. Um, it was a spoken word opportunity to at the Democratic National Convention um, back in 2016 um, when Hillary Clinton was running um, against Bernie Sanders. That was a huge accomplishment, um, I would say. Um, another one just happened uh, this past year, teaching at Southwood Middle School in Chicago, um, just teaching those students and working with those students and just understanding, you know, how influential um, and I would say that was just a learning experience um, that prepared me for, you know, today and for now, moving into Atlanta. Dope, man. So, yeah. um, I, I know you mentioned, you know, you came from Chicago, man. I was so from your experience and you know from you doing this so long what's been your most difficult hurdle for you to overcome as an artist um, well i don't know if it necessarily has to do with, with being from chicago but i just think a lot of people don't really understand how much work goes behind being an artist you know um, yeah the artists and they think that you know they just blow up overnight or you know they just become this huge and sometimes you know maybe it appears like that but there, there's so much groundwork that goes behind it you know people don't get to always see that and you know i know me personally as an artist you know maybe it's not the same for everybody but i know i've invested a lot into my music into my craft and um, um i think i think that's just the part that sticks out to me as an artist you know i know all the how many hours how many unreleased songs that i have that the world may never hear you know um and how many shows i've done there was maybe 10 people in the crowd or you know small audiences or you know whether it's teaching music you know all these little experiences um build up and ultimately you know are going to prepare me for this next chapter like i just said as i'm up here to Atlanta. um from chicago, awesome chicago, i would say uh in comparison to other cities um you know, a little bit and it's gotten better, I would say, but we're a little bit divided in terms of a culture. One thing, one of the reasons why I came to Atlanta is, yeah, there's so many artists out here, but they really support, you know, each other. I mean, that's how they're able to level up in Chicago, you know, and other places as well. And there's just a lot of, you know, hatred sometimes in the community. And, you know, people don't really like to see somebody that's doing successful and yeah. kind of them as a threat rather than, you know, somebody that they could build with and help with. And that's just, you know, one thing I noticed that's different than in Atlanta. They really do help each other and support all the artists. You know? Yeah, you're definitely right about that, man. Because this out here in Chicago, it's rough, especially yeah. trying to get supporters. You know what I mean? Man. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, how do you feel about the Internet, man? How's it impacted your career? The Internet? Yes. Um I mean, I guess I mean I was born. I'm a, I'm I'm a '90s baby, but you know I'm I'm definitely a part of the age where it's been a, a huge part of my life, um, the internet. So you know it definitely has pros and cons, but you know I'm able to see both sides of it. I have no issues with the internet. I use it to you know expand my brand and everything. But you know only time it becomes an issue is this, you know people just internet gangsters. You know people that just talk tough behind. Oh computers. yeah, you know that, that's a real thing. But you know you get you get people like six nine. You know, but that's not that's not you know that's not me as an artist. So it doesn't really affect me. I use I use social media primarily to you know expand my brand and my reach with my followers and connect with those people. But you know, I think I think it's, it's great for a lot of reasons. But for some reasons, you know, it's probably people right. just it's easy, easy to get caught up in social media. You know, <laughs> you're right about that. Sure. So 
Image. Before I get on to the next question, man, me and uh, Jazz are going to tag team this right quick, man. I know you mentioned 6 9 and uh, how do you feel about this? Um, is entertainment and being an artist a difference? Is there a difference between being an entertainer and an artist? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, I guess, if you're asking it from a literal standpoint, yeah. you know, everything's an artist to me. You know, if, okay. you're chef, if you're a chef, you're an artist, you know. So, okay. Uh, no pun intended, but you know, any there's a lot of artists, different forms of artistry, but entertainers, uh, six nine is definitely more of an entertainer than, than an artist, you know. Um, uh, exactly, that's okay, there's room for that, you know, in the entertainment <laughs> business, you know? yeah. So I, I, but I definitely consider myself more of an uh artist, I let my art entertain you, you know, I'm not here to right necessarily for the jokes or yeah. Period. Because it got to speak for itself. Period. <laughs> yeah, I like the music to work for itself. Definitely. Don't you you got the know. next one, Jazzer? Yes. So with COVID-19, and we know, I cannot believe we've almost been in this for like a year. But yeah. I know you're, you've are you probably had to change some things and some practices when it comes to your music. So what's one major way that COVID-19 impacted you? And how did you, you know, go about it and change? Well, I think I think one way that has definitely impacted all artists is performances. Uh, performance, right. you know, um, that's where the biggest hit has been for artists. You know, it's one of the main streams of income for artists. You know, even more so than you just listening to their music. You going to an artist concert. You know, is really one of the prim most primary, you know, ways artists generate income. So, you know, for me directly, uh, it did force me to. Um, kind of make make the move that I did and move into it and you know where it's a little bit obviously I'm still practicing like, safety and everything but um understanding that there's performance opportunity and you know another challenge for me to get through you know as an artist you know so I would exactly. say probably the biggest the biggest issue right now for artists is performances but you know it's it forced everybody every business to kind of change their business models and different things like that. You know I think I think um, to uh, not to COVID in a positive light, but you know, in, in ways, it's, it's giving people a time to sit back and think about what they really want to do with their life. Facts. If, you're using, if you're using this time and you're attacking the time, you know, you're not just sitting down and wasting your time, you know, then it's actually can people, a lot of people are going to come out of this, you know, even better than they were before quarantine. You know, it's just about the mindset, I guess, you know. Exactly, man. Agree. Yeah. 100 percent man because if, if you're just wasting your time you're not picking up something up you're not picking up a hobby a craft or you know trying to do a side hustle or something there's something wrong with you yeah you, know? now's the time. you, want, to, you want to be sitting in the house all day bored for so sure. uh 2021 man what are you most excited for um ultimately i'm just excited for growth um i know personally how much i've grown as an artist and i don't feel like i've had uh i, I feel like i've yet to fully dis display it you know i do feel like i'm kind of like uh, I, I'm, a, I'm still a very brand new artist, despite having put in so much work um, into this, behind this. Um, but I feel like uh, now is definitely my time. And, you know, I feel like maybe the other year, maybe the other years I wasn't extremely, I wasn't uh, as prepared or ready, you know, and I feel like now that I'm, I feel like I'm now reaching, reaching that point, you know. Um, Jay-Z was 26 when he dropped Reasonable Doubt, and I just turned 25, you know, so this year I'll be turning 26. And, um, understanding that, understanding what type of artist that, you know, I plan to be. Um, that's what I look towards, you know, for motivation. I do feel like all of the artists that I grew up on, all the artists that, you know, they weren't, you know, one hit wonders or they weren't the artists that are here today going tomorrow, you know. Um, and, and they peaked or they reached, you know, a certain height in their career when they're around the age that I am now, you know. And that's what excites me the most, you know, out of like I said, I, I've been making music for a long time, but I still feel like a brand new artist. And I feel like I got so much to show the world, for real. Dope, man. And we're going to see it. Yeah, we're we, <laughs> we, we going to hear it, too. <laughs> for sure. You already know. It's the Wake Up With Morning Show. Uh, Jazz, you got a couple other questions? I do. Uh, let us know where we can find your music, all the listeners and the viewers out there. Most definitely. Um, I'm on all platforms, for sure. Title, Apple Music, Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere at 4 a.m., Chat Vinny. Um, I'm also on YouTube. You can see all my videos, a lot of new more videos coming out very soon. You know, my brother ACP out of New York. Um, what else? Also on SoundCloud, of course. Um, that's where most of my music is, honestly. If, if you go to my SoundCloud and people don't really listen to SoundCloud, 
uh, as much anymore. But if you're an OG listener, um, a lot of your favorite songs are probably on there. Still, you know, I haven't taken them down. So, facts. I got a whole playlist on SoundCloud. Yeah, I like SoundCloud yeah. personally. I, I, still, I still appreciate SoundCloud. SoundCloud's good. I like it too, man. It Before we get you out of here, man, we usually like to play a game with you uh, called Over and Under with our good friend DJ Young Homie, but he's not here today, so I'm going to take the liberty and uh, play this game with you if that's cool with you, man. That's cool. Let's play. Cool, cool. So the way this works is I'm going uh, to name a food, an item, and you're going to just basically tell if it's overrated or underrated. And it's kind of a little bit why. Yeah, kind of explain a little yeah. bit why. Cool? Yeah, let's go. Cool, cool. Jazz, you could probably kind of tag team with me here. All right. First yeah. one. Let's do this. Chicken and waffles. Overrated or underrated? That's definitely that's definitely underrated. Okay. I would not say Back. overrated only just because I feel like you should be hip. Like nobody should not know about that combination. That's a combination that should you should yeah. have. Like you should be <laughs> so if you haven't, you sleeping. You know, I don't know if everybody's <laughs> community, but chicken and waffles definitely go hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. I usually say it's a little overrated, but I'm gonna have to find the right spot, man. That's all it is. I, I haven't found the right spot. <laughs> you want the next yeah. one, Jazzy? Yeah, of course. So I agree on that. Just just saying chicken and waffles is amazing. I'm so hungry right now. Me too. <laughs> so uh yeah, speaking of food, deep dish pizza. Is that overrated, underrated, and why? All right, okay. All right, Come on, so man. I'm going to make a lot of people upset. You know, I, I, know. Go, man. <laughs> I am going to say that it's not a love deep dish pizza, but I am going to say it's slightly overrated only because yes. only because <laughs> when I'm not in Chicago, that's all people want to talk about. And we just got so much other fire food, you know, then just okay. even our regular pizza is fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to get deep about. dish pizza. You know, we got regular fire pizza. So, you know, that's the only reason why, you know. That's, That's what I'm it. talking about. I like to think the Chicagoans, we like uh, our thin crust pizza, you know, a little thin crust, a little mm-hmm. well done, extra sauce. But that's just me, you know? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's too much hype around a deep dish. It is, it is, you know, good, you know, and it's unique. But yeah, yeah. we got thin crust pizza that's better than everybody's too. <laughs> you already know. So we got a couple more before we get out of here. We're going to play one of your tracks too. All right. Yeah. The next one. Hot dogs. Chicago style hot dogs. Overrated or underrated? Remember, no um, ketchup. Yeah, I don't, I'm not good. I don't like ketchup, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna say that they're. Uh, I'm gonna say that they're. I'm gonna say they're they're, they're overrated. Honestly, okay. I'm, only I agree. I'm, I'm, not like, I'm not even I'm not even big on hot dogs in general. I'm gonna get a burger. You know, I'm gonna get Italian beef or something. Gotcha. I like burgers too, man. Fries on the side, mouth sauce. There you go. Exactly. Mm. Okay, we have to stop talking about food. (laughs) (laughs) You got the last one, Jazzer? Yeah, I'm actually going to, you know, go out on a whim here and throw a new one out there. Okay, let's do it. Hot Crunchy Curls. Overrated, underrated, Mm -hmm. and why? Look, Jazz, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, That's one of the things I miss most about not being at home. Like when When I'm not at home, I crave Crunchy Curls all day, every day. I'm gonna say that uh, severely, <laughs> severely <laughs> underrated. Like I don't know why they're not in every store nationwide. Why you can only find them in Chicago? That's the issue. Man, <laughs> I agree so oh, man. wholeheartedly. Like when we were at Hampton, I was like crying on the inside all the time because I was just like, I need some hot crunchy curls, dude. So, so forgive me if I'm I'm, I'm I'm a little late here. Or wrong. Are these the venture ones? Yes. Okay, okay, now I know what yeah. you're talking about. So those good Google with some Wildwood Pop. You remember Wildwood Pop? Oh, yeah, the Wildwood Pop, <laughs> too. You yeah. Like, there you go. I just, I don't condone eating hot crunchy curls with pop. That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty. I love you too, you that, Jazz. I don't normally eat it. I don't, I don't eat it. You gotta curl. have a bottle of water. You gotta have some water. <laughs> Got you. Hey, since you're in Atlanta out there, man, why don't you answer this question for me, man? Are we the only ones that say pop out here? Um, I haven't been around enough Georgians to know if we're the only ones that say it, but it seems like it. Like when okay. I go up there and I say certain things, they they be making it seem like you know I'm the only one saying this stuff out here. So <laughs> yeah, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now nah, Georgia, you know they country out here, so they, I'll be laughing at them too. You already know, Chef Jimmy. It's been a pleasure, man. Why don't you tell them where we can find you, man? Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, 
Um, all at 4 a.m. Got Chef Jimmy. 4 a.m. like the time. Um, Chef Jimmy like the cook. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. Thank y'all for having me. Wake up and man show. No problem, man. Hey, hey, why don't you introduce this new track that, that we got from you, boss? For sure. That's a project off my latest uh, complete project called The Soul Food Taste Value One. It's called Real With You. Let me be real with y'all. Thank you. Have a good one. Appreciate you, boss. Thank you. Let's do it. Excuse me, miss. I'm trying to make sure that everything is good. She missed. I see tonight you stepped out and you killed this friend. Girl, I've been the realest, I ain't new to this I'm trying to see what's real with you Give me a second to remind you what I did with you But the show game, how you feeling spiritual Body sing like you got pretty spears with you Fast for a couple problems in the city Let's see side of the mind games, mind games Baby, I can't fall in love in your time frame Sipping lemonade, listening to Yonsei